this is a lesson of 2016. If I released it le- next year, they would say, Donna, you're impacting on 2018. If I release it the following, Donna, you're, you're impacting. George, for those who are telling me to shut up, they told Hillary that a couple of months ago. You know what I tell them? Go to hell. They don't know what it's like because the, the, the high command of Brooklyn, the people who were making the decisions, even for the DNC, they didn't come and work with us. They told us to shut up uh, and basically let them win the election. Wow. Donna Brazil this morning pulled no punches in responding to critics of her new memoir of her time as head of the DNC, including a bombshell revelation that Hillary Clinton's campaign controlled the purse strings of the party before she was officially named the nominee. And Brazil's admission that she considered replacing Clinton with Joe Biden as the party's nominee. And joining me now, Republican strategist Evan Siegfried, contributing writer for the L.A. Times, opinion section Jamil Smith, MoveOn.org, Kareem Jean-Pierre, and national Republican consultant Kate Dawson. I'm just going to go around the horn and ask what people think of uh, of Donna Brazil coming out with this information now and the circular firing squad that it has created among Republicans. Jamil, I'll start with you. Well, my issue is not that she's speaking out. My issue is the fact that she's been wrong. Uh, it's been proven with Alex Seitz Walls reporting for your own site, MSNBC.com, that the memo that she's talking about in the political excerpt was not, in fact, you know, subject to the primary, but it was all for the general election. And Bernie, had he won the nomination, would have been able to make the same arrangement. So the fact that she's getting things wrong is a big problem. Also, the fact that she would, you know, propose to thwart the Democratic small d uh, will of the people and who voted for Hillary Clinton by replacing her because she had a feigning spell, uh, I think that should raise a lot more alarm than I think maybe is is being is being raised at the moment. I think if I had done half the things that she admits to in these excerpts, I'm not sure I would be telling folks. Um, and you know, uh, Kareen, there has been it, it's an interesting dynamic. There have been people who support Bernie Sanders who are really uh, elated with this information, and some even using it to push the really absurd idea that Hillary Clinton rigged the primaries. You can't rig 50-plus primaries. There's no way to do it. States hold primaries. The DNC doesn't dictate you go in there and force you to vote for Hillary Clinton. More people vote for Hillary Clinton. Like, that's just the fact. Um, but this this uh, other aspect of it, this consideration that when Hillary Clinton fainted because she had the walking pneumonia, uh, the idea that she would consider overturning the will of the Democratic voters, as the uh, Hillary for America team said on Medium uh, by attempting to replace her with Tim Kaine, Tim, her and Tim Kaine as Democratic potential and vice presidential nominees. Uh, Hillary for America folks said it's particularly troubling and puzzling that she would seemingly buy into false Russian field propaganda spread by both the Russians and our opponent, albeit about our candidates' health. Finally, we're pretty tired of people who were not part of our campaign telling the world what it was like to be on the inside of our campaign and how we felt about it. And I think that is a, uh, a reference to her saying there was not a lot of joy in the campaign. Kareem, this is a complicated issue, but it does feel like right. Democrats are trapped in an endless feedback loop about the 2016 primary. Yeah, it's incredibly complicated. But to your point about the rigged elections, I mean, if we want to talk about rigged elections, we should look at the general election and Russia's interference into our democracy. Um, and so that's so that's that's that. But look, Joy, I actually, um, as a black young operative, Donna Brazil is someone that I've admired almost almost my entire uh, career, my entire life, and followed, and many of us see her as an icon in this business. So what I did last night is I reached out to her, and we actually had a conversation, and I asked her uh, what, you know, what, what is, what was the, why the book, why now? And uh, it was a brief conversation, but she told me a couple of things that, that stuck out to me. Number one is that what happened to her in 2016 with the hacking was worse than even the Hurricane Katrina, which I think says a lot. Uh, because she's from Louisiana, as we know. She has family there. But the second thing was that she really wanted uh, to do an autopsy of the Democratic Party for us to look under the hood and see what happened, especially after the results of 2016, which I think is incredibly important. Uh, you know, they say the best uh, sunshine is the best disinfectant. And, and so, so, that's, so that, that was that part of that conversation. And then we, we talked about how we can't be distracted right now. You know, we have a race, two races. Races, two big races in New Jersey and and and, uh, and Virginia this Tuesday, and we really have to be focused as a, as a party. And right now, we just we we just are not. We can't just be anti-Trump. We have to figure out what are we for. What is the Democratic Party doing? How we how are we really uplifting um, our, our 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 voices, the, the the members, the people who are part of the Democratic Party? Yeah, indeed. And let me play one more um, clip to that very point, Kareen. Just uh, Kareen, that you. 
you just made. This is Donna, Re Donna Brazil talking about whether or not she regrets uh, the book dropping right now. And by the way, for those of you who have not written and published a book, the author doesn't determine when the book comes out. That would be the publisher who clearly was trying to take advantage of the anniversary of the election. So it's not Donna Brazil that de determined the date, but she did determine, obviously, the contents. So here's Donna Brazil about regrets. Do I regret taking on a job uh, the second time in my life as chair of the party, cleaning up everybody's mess, taking all of the income in, being unable to spend funds that I raised? Do I regret being on the road 100 percent of the time, being hacked by the Russians, being, being harassed, getting death threats? Do I regret any of that? George, this was worse than Hurricane Katrina in terms of the emotional toll. And, Kate, you know, you're, you, uh, on the other side of the aisle, are a longtime uh, operative who's in this business, and you know that uh, every, so, every few years, parties do a house cleaning. Uh, they go back and they assess what went wrong. They assess why they're not more popular with the American people. The Republicans did it um, in the famous autopsy after Barack Obama was elected. Do you think there's value for, even though it's, it is the opposing party, uh, in a party maybe doing some house cleaning, even if it's painful and even if it's on the eve of a couple of elections? It's certainly valuable. Well, you have to do it. It doesn't mean you're going to win or lose. In my commentary of this, I think Donna's book is political rubbish. I mean, for once, I'm going to take up for the Clintons in that campaign. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we operatives on the Republican side understand who Donna is. She was a big help to us getting President Bush for eight years. She was the campaign manager of Al Gore's campaign. Uh, they weren't ready for the recount. Carl Rowe's team was ready for the recount. Uh, certainly, there's always been an angst between the Gore and the Clinton teams. So this is reliving that history and using the Clintons to, to sell a lot of books. Uh, the Clinton team has, deserves the right to be upset uh, and mad and angry about this retelling of her personal events of that campaign. As far as the Democrat Party, Democratic Karine's Party. Right, this is debt. The Democratic Party, this is damaging to them in fundraising. This takes the Clinton donors and puts them back on their heels who normally would give money. And, and I'm not trying to help the Democratic Party, but what I'm telling you is that this, this book is made, is out to make money, and we're helping her make money today. But I think there's so many disingenuous facts in there about the fundraising and, and then Elizabeth Warren and, and, and Bernie Sanders piling on. You know, it, it certainly helps the Republican Party at this time, and, and, and I don't think there's a Democratic consultant in the country that wants to do that. But again, I, I can test a lot of the stuff that's there. When you have a political opera that continues to say, I, me, and, and not we and us, it t that ought to be telling to you what's in this book. And Evan, I, I take it you agree that this is a good news for your side, particularly uh, as the Virginia race is imminent. Uh, the New Jersey race seems like it's going to go probably the Democrats away, Democrats away, but you never know. Um, but I guess Republican operatives cheering this morning. What do you think? We're not upset whatsoever. But at the same time, the Virginia race was really doomed for Ralph Northam in the first place. He's about as exciting as a trip to the dentist, and that was before everything. Gillespie that, is exciting? Gillespie isn't well, that exciting. Well, Donald Trump. But you have so much excitement among Democrats of, because of uh, Donald Trump and how he's energized them, and there are tumbleweeds going through Ralph Northam uh, rallies. That should be a concerning sign. Then you had the Latino Victory Fund ad, which was despicable, come out, where it was mowing down kids with a pickup truck and implying that all of Gillespie's supporters are racist, which what is What about totally the uh, Ed Gillespie tack of of essentially becoming a neo-confederate and fighting his campaign basically on racial scare ads where he's saying brown people are coming to kill you because they're all in MS-13, MS uh, which is what the Latino victory ad was responding to, and essentially a guy from New Jersey suddenly becoming the big defender of Robert E. Lee. You don't think that might have been a bit divisive? Listen, I think that with the campaign in general was divisive because we are a divided nation. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are also seeing both parties. And what Donna Brazil has exposed is that in addition to the Republican Party having a civil war, the Democratic Party is having a civil war as well, just that nobody had really talked about it. You've got the Bernie bros and the Clinton wing tearing one another apart. And they are now, as we're seeing in Virginia, helping to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. You're seeing already people blaming one another 
and the Northam campaign about why they are going to lose on Tuesday. If they somehow win, Republicans will go home and say, OK, you know, this was a hard race. If Northam loses, you're going to see Democrats go crazy. And that's going to contribute to hyperpartisanship that doesn't help anyone because you're going to see the Democrats say, we need to be even more resisting Republicans at every turn and be even more to the left. And when you do that and you wind up having to come and have people govern, especially at the federal level in Congress, you're going to see zero compromise and people are going to become more and more angry. So we need to actually have people who are wanting to go and work together and not panic when they lose a race like they could on Tuesday. I don't think there's anybody in either party that wants to work with the other party at this point. But Jamil, can you, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to argue that point that you do now. I mean, I think you've already had essentially a civil war right. within the Democratic Party. This has just exposed it. And maybe some of the other kind of messiness in terms of finances at the DNC, operation of the DNC. This is a civil war that's now public. Well, really, part of the problem with the Brazil stuff is that it's focusing on personalities. Mm -hmm. It's focusing on people who most voters don't know, don't really care about. Uh, most voters care about what they're interested in. And to that point, the Democrats really failed in the Virginia race to this extent that they didn't really concentrate on getting out the black vote. They marched in President Obama at the last minute trying to excite black voters. But the lack of outreach to black voters in Virginia and every other state is a big, big, problem for Democrats and not one that's not one that's going to be solved with a book. It's not one that's going to be solved with some kind of uh, contrived autopsy. It's one that's going to be solved with hard work and investment. And to this point, the Democrats aren't showing enough oomph, you know, to do that. It kind of sounds like that's what Donald Brazil was saying, too. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> She's definitely getting a lot of attention. Evan Siegfried, Jamil Smith, Kareen Jean-Pierre, Kate and Dawson, thank you all. And a programming note that Donna Brazil will join us here on AM Joy next Sunday. And coming up, more on the breaking news in the Robert Mueller investigation, plus big news about one of the big-time billionaires who funded the Trump campaign. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.